and uh, I was we're gonna cook out tonight. It's just my best friend, and um, I was like, dude, I need a stream. He's like, oh, just come over here and do it before. I was like, all right, I'm sorry, it takes like two hours, but you got a stream. And he's like, okay, you can use my son's room. So that's why I got his. I wish his kid was here because he is the cutest kid ever. And I blame my friend. He's an awesome father. Yeah, yeah. They've got boats go. And that they do. It's a pretty cool book, actually. That they do. And yeah. We'll like let. Steve, how many people are you going to think are going to come? We're like a full four hours earlier today, huh? Oh, no audio for Steve. I forgot to put your Steve on. I forgot to put your audio on, Steve. All right, you're on. Check, check, Steve. Yeah, and let me... Uh, you're good. Actually, the... Oh, am I on now? Yeah, okay. I just had to do and something. And then let me, uh, let me rename myself, too. All right. so that it's in there. You should name yours at Elmachias. And I'll name you... Good morning. What's up, Odin? Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Say what up in chat. I know we're on at a different time today, so I was kind of nervous. I don't know how many people are showing up, but thank you ahead of time um, for there, coming. I, I renamed mine. Oh, Elmakaisa's cat. Perfect. <laughs> 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 and, uh, yeah, but we, we came out a little bit early let people get set up. Steve, I'm actually going to grab water really fast. Oh. You go, man. Thanks for I'll that say follow. say hi to everybody. I just got to get the chat up really quick here. Thanks for that follow, friend. Take my stuff all off. I'll oh, move this down. There we go. There we go, chat. We got Odin. Get out of there. We got I'm Prime Directive. As we're, as we're talking. BRB. Say again? You can say hi to people. I'll be back. All right. I'm just I'll say hi to people. You come back. Why do we have a... That's really weird. Really weird. Hey, what's up, man? Connor's in there. Odin's in there. It's yeah, it's early. Yeah, okay. What time is it there, Odin? I move my keyboard where I can actually type. Uh, Connor says, "Steve, your R five R six discussion was great." By the way, Connor, thank you so much for joining in on that. It was awesome to see you in the chat for that. Except for a couple of comments, the feedback that. has been great. Um, so that's been really good. He's talking about a. I, I interviewed Canon about the new Canon R5 and R6. It's up on my YouTube channel. Yes, it's behind the shot on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, and Connor was there. Thank you, Kawhi Trash. There. Yes, dude, Kawhi. Subscribe to Tier One. Nice. I feel like you're here so often. Are you? Uh, what's your pronoun? Just so I can say it correctly. Are you? Are you? Uh, I keep calling you they, but it's just I don't know. What's up, Marissa? Savannah Lee too. Nice. Um, you know, I want to refer to Clyde Trash. I use she, they, so either works for me. Okay, yo, you, she, she, comes, so. she has gifted so many subs and subs herself. It's awesome. And uh, Kawhi, Kawhi Trash. Trash. Yeah. Sorry, I just came in hot. I didn't ask you what you were talking about. But yeah, yeah, she's amazing. Thank you for all the support, dude. Let me. Pop out the chat would be good. I'm so yeah. We stand it. Yeah, are... she's awesome. Yo, Kawhi, this Thursday we're still setting screens up and stuff. This you're good, Kawhi. This Thursday we're doing a mod stream. Steve's coming. I gotta ask Parker if he wants to come still, but it's gonna be sweet because we're gonna put Marissa, Captain Connor, and uh, Bryn all on on video. I'm excited. Yeah, because the problem is nobody ever gets to see them. Yeah, I want to do meet the mods. Meet the meet the mods. Meet the mods. MTM. Yeah, MTM. Because people never get to see them. Which I, what's up? Yeah, we are early today. We've got a guest who's all the way in UK, so we gotta we gotta accommodate them. Yes, yeah. adjust the time. Otherwise, it's one o'clock in the morning. Are they eight? Is he eight hours later than Pacific? Eight hours or later. So hours. that's why I can do the photo. That's why I moved the photo hangout up. Is because hangout up is because I used to do it at the same time. Um, what's up, Danny H? How's it going? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what time or day it is. Oh yeah, I didn't really tell him. It's the same time as the hangouts, guys. It's on Thursday, and it's going to be at one or three or whatever. That's the oh, standard for me. I don't Marissa's know what talking about right now. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. I yeah, that's fair. I've just been ripping. Steve, are you still setting up screens? I'll keep going. No, I'm good to go, man. Oh. How you been? Yo, Savannah, I know it's good. Savannah, I know it's off topic, but that's fine. Uh we're basically gonna send a link and people can submit a photo through that link. So we just didn't make it public because there's so many people and we wanna try to um send it out to people who took a moment to comment or do something like that. So we'll get it to you. Um, just bear with us. Talking about the magazine, Steve. Yeah. Of course you're yeah, allowed to I saw it. that. And by the way, I, I was actually in your first or your second one. I don't remember which. Yeah. And uh, the fact that you're doing it all electronically, I think is going to be freaking awesome. Yeah, maybe we'll get it printed sometime, but the electronic allows us to include more people. The first two times we did it, it was awesome. We had like 25 pros and then 25 like amateurs, but they weren't really amateurs. They're just really good. And they hadn't become pros yet, but they're they're just right. as good in my opinion. And um, what up, Parker? Yeah, Parker's the, here. Yeah, the stream's nice starting early. Nice picture you posted on Twitter, Parker. If um, and then if anybody that's a mod wants to announce in a, a Discord that we're going live, go for it. I, I can't pull it up, but oh, Christian, what, <coughs> I can do it really quick. You talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. I we're, got it. We Parker, we got a we got a guest who like I don't really didn't know how to tell people the time change other than to tweet it, Instagram it, and Discord it. And yeah, our guest is coming from the UK, and I he was said the time was fine, and I messaged him a few days ago. I just want to let you. I was like, I just want to let you know, it's three a.m. for you, or what like, one a.m. And he was like, oh, we got to switch it. And I was like, yeah, that's totally fine. That's kind of what I planned. It's a non-issue. I'm back. And welcome back. Thanks for thanks for announcing. Anything happened I missed? Um, no, not at all. <laughs> it's interesting as I'm watching the stream. There's a bunch of chat in there that looks like it's from a previous session. Actually, no, I guess those are us uh, scrolling through. Is it is it Connor and I talking about cookies? Yes, there was something. Yeah, Connor and I started talking before we went live about cookies. Okay. I was like, Connor, I'm looking for a spatula. What's up, Miranda? Miranda's in there. Yeah. What's up? We got a VIP up in here. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. Yeah, we're just waiting on Christian. Not waiting. I mean, this is the time that he's going to join. There's nothing. He's not later. You know, it would be a fun. Uh, it would be a fun show. Would be get the past guests do a, do a show of nothing but past guests. What's up, Lisa? Editing this week's photo. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, like a VIP challenge or something. Yeah, VIP challenge. See what Miranda does with this thing. That would be awesome. I'd love to see that. Yeah. No, that would be cool. Or Thomas or whoever. Sometimes the pros will like join in and it's pretty cool. Like to see their edits. I'm always honored. I'm like, wow. You didn't have to do Lisa. that. You didn't have to do that. Okay. We got Christian. Everybody give Christian a warm welcome. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, now batting. Christian Tierney. Yeah. Hello. Can Hello. You hear me? Yeah. How are we? And we can see you. It's a double Good. threat. That's bad news that you can see me. But how are you? How are we? We're good. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Yeah. Where are you from, from, man? Uh, from Dublin, Ireland. A little town called Lucan in the west of Dublin. It's quite like suburban. Wait, did um, you say Logan? Lucan. L-U-C-A-N. L -U -C -A -N. Yeah, Lucan. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, it's about like 30 minutes outside Dublin City. So, um, yeah, it's lovely. I love it. So We're I've been supposed home. to be there in May. Oh, really? Yeah. Of course, COVID Pretty sad. Yeah. took all that away. Christian, we got, yeah. sorry, I was going to say we got some of his friends in chat. We got Miranda McDonald and Connor, no Connor, up, and Connor Mc, McDonald <laughs> also. What's up, Connor? What's up, Miranda? Yeah, and then a bunch of other guys. My favorite well. people. Yeah. What were we going to say, Steve? Go for it. Uh, no, that was it. Dr. Clown's in there, too. Oh, yeah. Dr. Clown PF Fart. That's not somebody you know. They just have a funny name. But, yeah. Yeah, Connor's in there. Hello, Connor. It's Connor McDonald and Miranda McDonald. McDonald. Do you know Miranda? Two, yeah, yeah. Two very Irish names for two very yeah. not Irish people. Oh, is that um, a, is Miranda Irish or the last name is Irish? McDonald is uh, is an Irish name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can make fun yeah. of me for not knowing Irish names. It's cool. It's okay. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect to know know your stuff over in America. So it's okay. We don't want to know our stuff in America. It's a mess. <laughs> I turned on the news a couple of days ago and I said, no, I do not need to know anything else about that country. But uh, <laughs> It's okay. We we do our best. I think we're like 11 for 11 of never talking about politics on the stream ever. It's kind, it's oh, kind no, of... We've a, nailed it. 
yeah, it's kind of a nice break from reality. Like we can all acknowledge yeah, yeah. it's kind of nutty out there, but for these two hours or this hour and a half, it's just yeah. I don't even know who your president is. So. <laughs> no, I don't think no. our president know who he is. Who he is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All of a sudden, it got real political. Oh, well, man. I was just gonna say it's like family. You don't talk politics or religion. Yeah, and you're exactly. good. Exactly. Or uh, okay, we can usually start it off with a good question, Christian. You've toured. Um, you've traveled with artists. Do you use shower shoes? Do I use shower shoes? Yeah, you know, like shoes. Uh, no, I've actually never toured with anybody who I'm aware of that does use shower shoes. That is. However, some, however, that is however I've been in. I've been in some really rundown venues where, looking back, I wish I had <laughs> some kind of shower have. shoes. <laughs> I did like a, an unnamed state fair on a tour a couple of years ago an unnamed and, um, state are you unnaming it out of respect un- oh. yeah yeah i just i just don't want to no, we're, we're just not unnamed. getting we're just not getting political on here yeah, 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 yeah um and like the showers were have you seen a do you, have you watched prison break prison yeah i've watched like yeah. you know the the series where he's in the south american prison i don't know if i, watched I know the one. series i haven't watched it yeah yeah so it the, the showers kind of felt like that oh and man we were all pretty certain we were going to get some kind of disease. But we're still alive. So so, alive. Shower, sh- so shower shoes, is that a tour tip that I've missed? No, nah, like we just like to ask everybody because it's a funny thing that we have a, a, an emote for. Like, I don't know. I don't mm. think you have the chat up, but everybody's like putting shower shoes or no shower shoes icons right now. And yeah, my, um, my, just so that you know, my icon is definitely shower shoes. Um, Which are, you know, it's shoes. like flip flops. You know? I don't wear them at all. Okay. Ever. Flip, yeah, flip flops I can see, but then there are people who wear those kind of like those little booties that you wear into uh, oh. into the sea, like sea, like sea shoes, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like that's, I can, th- yeah, that's a little bit too far for me, but flip flops I'm all for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just funny because like people all tour and everybody has a different take on it. Like some people are like, absolutely. And then I don't know, we had some people who are like, I mean, you're in a shower with soap. Like what's the worst that's going to happen? So the funny, it's a funny yeah. divide. Yeah, fair, fair. Oh, Miranda says you must wear shower shoes. Come on. Shower. Miranda, sorry to let you down, Miranda. <laughs> I'll start. I promise. I promise. Next tour. See, I, I, my bag is always overweight. Going through mm. airports. I'm the guy who always gets caught for the bag being too heavy. Do you check just, bags I, or no? I, yeah, yeah, I check a big bag, and. I just, I just had that's that's a few extra pounds for shower shoes that I just, I'd have to sacrifice something else pretty a vital. Few extra you know? pounds. We're not talking hiking boots. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're gonna do it, do it right. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing, safety, I'm doing, I'm first. doing, I'm doing waders up to here. Oh, uh, it's like you're catching a crocodile or something. You never uh, know. Later, Parker. Um, well, the way that he described the showers, that's possible. Yeah, that's very possible. possible. That's very, very possible. possible. Well, cool. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who do not know, this is Christian Tierney. He's a very successful music portrait photographer from Dublin, a small town outside of Dublin, to be exact, right? Am I saying that incorrect? That's right. I think that's correct. And um, yeah, yep. you guys, he was generous enough to uh, donate a Drake shot, which it's my understanding he's shot from the crowd, which is, uh, we find ourselves in that position a lot. And it was great to see all your guys' edits. So we're going to interview him. Then he's, Steve's going to talk about the shot with him. He's going to edit. We'll talk about your guys' edits. And that's kind of our schedule for today. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in chat. We don't really have any rules here other than be kind. Don't be a dick. And just be respectful because we're all here to learn. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. But anyway, Christian, you started like nine years ago. Is that correct? I'm right. Yeah, I, I used to make skate videos when I was a kid. There's a skate oh, park like yes. right beside my house, like 30 seconds away. And um, I kind of grew up there at the time I was about like 10, mm. 9, 10. And um, like all the older kids would make skate videos. And I just naturally wanted to do what they did at that age. So um, I got like a little camcorder um, and just started making videos. And it was just something that I did when I was at the skate park. And I never really thought of it as anything more than that. And then like kind of as the years kind of went on um, when I got to like 12, 13, I just, I started really getting heavy into like video editing and just ended up spending all my time watching video editing tutorials. So you and started with video? Started Not with video, photo. yeah. Okay. 
No photo, yeah. Which explains um, some of the videos you have on your site, actually, because you have a couple. You know, James Bay is up there, Conor McGregor, a mm. bunch of them in video form. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then I, when I was just turned 14, I got a Canon T2i DSLR okay. because that was kind of the first, like, amazing video DSLR that was coming out. And, um, I got that and just once I got the camera, I just put everything into making videos and started liking videos more than the actual skating itself. And then about six months later, a local rapper in Dublin called Daniel Denny, he saw one of my uh, skate videos on Facebook and sent me a message thinking I was like 25 and was like, hey, want to make me a music video? I'll give you 50 euro for it. And I'd never made money ever in my life before. And I'm like, yeah, because you're like 15. Fan. You said? Yeah, four, 14, yeah. 14. Nobody's so made money at 14 like, usually. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So he was like, he was like, I'll pay you to put, I was like, he wants to pay me to like put my two favorite <laughs> things together, making videos and music. Yeah. It's like, this absolutely. Real life? And then, so my dad drove me into the city and I arrived and he was like, oh shit, you're like really young. But he was like, if you can do the job, I suppose I'll give you the money. And then we ended up becoming really good friends and I was like, I'm just going to keep on doing this. So I reached out to like local acts and in Dublin, if seen if they wanted like videos made or, um, I, I'd started taking photos on the side because the DSLR was obviously amazing photos. Um, and then just kind of started from there. And then when I was 15, I started a YouTube channel and I, there was a channel in the UK that I was really into at the time called SBTV, who gave a lot of like big artists like Ed Sheeran and Rita Ora and people like that. Their it's, first like an, shot. it's like an MTV or like what, can you explain to us what it is? Or? No, it literally was a guy who started like when he was like 14, like oh, I was. Oh, okay, cool. He was, maybe, he was maybe five years ahead of me. Okay, cool. But he, used, he lives like, I don't know how much you know about the, the grime hip hop scene yeah. in the UK. I but learned about it at Wireless and all that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he so he um, he knew a load of those guys what, like growing up um, from school and local estates and stuff and just go around and film like rappers freestyling and put them up on this site. And the site like grew and grew and grew and he ended up like getting to work with like Richard Branson and he's like a big like medium like music mogul in awesome. the UK now called Jam Jamal Edwards and he was like a big inspiration of mine and I was like nobody's doing anything like this in Ireland and whereas the UK and London specifically had such a like a bubbling like grime scene um Dublin has like amazing do, like Ireland has amazing scenes do you, do you want to explain maybe because like a lot of people in here are from US and I know grime is mm. not nearly as big here do you want to give a yeah. brief description of like what that is just so um, yeah I don't even I love grime but even I don't feel qualified to kind of talk about the roots of what it's from it's like it's it's well, kind it's, of it's like a, it's a kind of like rap right that's what most people would equate yeah. it to even though that's it's not MCs correct. yeah rapping over uh, the beats have to be specifically between about like 130, 136 to like 142 BPM. Oh, it's like okay. very, so it's very, quick. it's very, it's very quick. It's very specific. It has like a really intricate like cadence and a lot of like US rappers when they try and rap on like a grime beat can't find the pocket. And it's like, it's, it's a completely <laughs> different kind of rhythm yeah. and it's inspired by like garage and jungle. And um, it started off as like a, a battle thing it was like people didn't make tracks they like played beats yeah it's pretty like and then, and then it's pretty personal MCs, to a lot of people right yeah 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 big time and mcs battled and it started out um on pirate radio but yeah that's kind of the, the back the background of it but uh yeah so while london had that and i was obsessed with this channel when i was like 13 14 when i started making the videos um, I was like, Ireland has such an amazing history of like songwriters like Damien yeah. Rice and like, oh, yeah. you could talk about songwriters from Ireland all day. And, but there were so many artists in Dublin who I saw that weren't getting the attention that I thought they wanted to get. So I was like, I'm just going to try and do something like that, but then just film the artists in Dublin that I think are cool. Um, and I started doing that. And within the first year, Macklemore came to Dublin. Oh, sick. And I, like, I, I used to just like go onto the listing because there's only one promoter in Ireland. And I went onto their website and just looked at who was coming on tour and was just like... There's only one promoter in all of Ireland? One promotional company, yeah, called MCD. They're actually now, I think, owned by Live Nation, but okay. um, it, but that made it very As Live easy Nation to, like, does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, taking over the world one, <laughs> yeah. one venue at a time. 
that made it very easy to kind of see exactly who was going to be coming on tour to Dublin and I was 15 and had nothing to lose so um, I just like emailed every single act who was coming to Dublin and got like one reply out of 100 and it ended up being Macklemore's manager. That's awesome. With him, filmed with him for a day when I was 15 and then once I had his name on my CV when I emailed people in the future I just didn't mention that I was 15. And then once they saw Macklemore, they kind of gave me a bit more access. So that's kind of how I started doing that. And the YouTube channel kind of did quite well for a few years and was growing and growing. And the same thing happened with James Bay. Like I emailed him before he blew up, same way I did with Macklemore. And that got quite a lot of traction. And um, I started doing live music photography when, uh, like usually when I did those videos, they'd make me do it during the sound check of the show that day. And they'd usually say like, while you're here, do you want to, do you want a photo pass and stick around for the show? So I just stick around and take some photos. And that's how I started doing live music photography. But that was very much from the time I was like 16 to 18, just something so I did because I just happened to be at the shows. It's right. nice. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. Sorry. Can I, I hope I just yeah. interject. Go for it, yeah. It's so nice to like, I like hearing your story because I like how organic it is. I like how you're just like, well, this is the next thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do this thing. And it was very much like, you know, I think it's hard sometimes for people to notice what they have and then work with it. Mm. And it seems like you yeah. really were like, well, this is my situation. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to push forward with it rather than being mm. bummed that you don't have all these other things. For example, being bummed that you weren't in London or something like, well, I yeah, only yeah. have one promoter here. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you and didn't it was let very... the age stop you. Yeah. And is so and you were smart enough to realize once you got one person on, on your resume, you could use that to catapult you even farther. I mean, mm. really, for how young you were, your your kind of business mind was a little more but advanced I, than your age. I wouldn't even because because I for the YouTube channel for the first like four or five years, like I like I never made a like a cent, and it wasn't like a business for me. It was just like I love doing this, mm -hmm. right. and I'm gonna do this regardless of whether I'm making money from it. And That's if a good place if to I be. can. If I can, yeah, I was just very lucky that I was so young and I was still in school and I was still living at home and I only lived 30 minutes from the city, so I had access to venues. Um, I know a lot of people aren't that lucky, but I, yeah, I just, I just wanted to work with my favorite artists. So when I was able to use one or two names to get me access to another artist, it was, that's just what I did, but it was never like, a, I'm going to do this as a business move because I might make money off it. Um, and I don't, I don't think I ever really made. You like still I don't make any YouTube. money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Quit photography now, you're never gonna make money. But I, yeah, I just made like a little bit of ad revenue, just to like, which didn't even cover my expenses. And then once record labels changed all their policies around who could film videos with their artists when I was about eighteen. Uh, 19 so like the YouTube channel became pretty unfeasible. Mm -hmm. But just very luckily around that time. I was enjoying, I was starting to enjoy photography a lot more than video. And I think I ended up being a lot better at photography than I was at video. And I started like just getting hired. Then people saw the photos I was taking at the shows and started hiring me for photography jobs. So when the, the, the things shifted and I couldn't do the channel anymore, um, I was just like, right, there's no point in me fighting this. It's not, I'm not I can't change it. And um, I might as well just go like dive head first into photography and just kind of try and leave video behind for the moment. Did you find it easier and, or harder or just different? Like, what do you think well, coming from video to photo? Like, How much do you think yeah. the video helped your photo or what, what's the vibe there? Did, did, oh, we lost him for a second. Or I, I got lost you, him. I got you. We got We're back. Him. We're good. Did you hear what I, I, did you, did you hear what I asked? Yeah, you? I heard, oh, your, I heard your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. So I, yeah. So when I was doing video, like I, the, the bits I loved the most was like, composition and color grading mm -hmm. and i was like that's if i do just those two that's photography i was like i love capturing a moment really beautifully in a frame yeah and i love i love editing the colors and i was like if i just get lightroom i can do that and forget about worrying about audio and forget about worrying about steady cams and worrying about stuff like that so um i was just like this is the best the best parts of it for me um i also like how I think with video, as you get bigger and bigger with video, it's, you start like needing, if you want to do music videos, you start needing teams and big budgets and lots of people. And I prefer things where I can do them when it's just, 
just me and a camera. Whereas like when I, like I used to play football when I was a kid and I ended up liking skating more than football because I could do it just by myself. I didn't need right. like a team of people to do it. I like being able to just pick up a camera and just go and shoot, which was a lot easier to do with photography than it was with video. And I really like the kind of instantaneous nature of, of photography in that sense. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into doing full-time music photography then. And around then I started, as I started doing more, I started getting offered festivals in Ireland. And then through festivals, like festivals obviously give you access to a lot of artists at once. So I had a lot more names on my portfolio. At least they used to. <laughs> they used to, yeah. I was very lucky that um, yeah. there's a festival in Dublin called Longitude and I got on really, really well with the promoter of that festival and he like let me do portraits of all the artists who were playing it. So um, I got to take portraits of like Dude, I, artists way bigger than I should have had access to. I feel and, like you, uh, I feel like you attribute. I hope, I just want to say I feel like you attribute so much to luck, and I feel like most of it is just even only after knowing you for a little bit. I know we've talked over the years. But it was my first time talking to you, really. Mm. Um, I feel like you're just a good dude. Like I feel like <laughs> your personality <laughs> and how you hold yourself and how you act. Like that is, gen I think that's, more, I would create, I would, that's a huge part of luck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, what that, I would say. that's a huge ingredient in luck. Yeah. So, well, make, make I sure don't you, know. I'm nobody but myself. It's, so it's, your, just... fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. Uh, well, I, that's very, very kind of you to say. And you both, yeah. both seem like great dudes too. And I have no doubt that that's attributed to your success too. But like, I think that's, especially like since I started touring, like I started touring when I was like 20 then. And, like people ask me like, well, how do you become a tour photographer? And it's like, I, it's 90% being somebody who an artist wants to live on a bus with for six months yeah. without break. Yeah. And it's 10% being able to take the photos. Yeah. You could be the best photographer in the world. And if an artist doesn't want to see you all day, every day, then and that's so, forget about it. And that's so hard to explain to people. And I think I've even caught, caught flack before trying to explain to people. I was like, look, like your photography doesn't really matter. And I don't mean that in a way where you shouldn't right. try to become a better photographer. I just yeah. mean that if your goal is to be on the road, from a business standpoint, you need to understand like what you need to work on is almost yourself. Like you need to make sure that yeah. you are, you know, a tourable person. What, what whatever that means to whether it means being healthy or mm. a nice person to hang out with or whatever that means in your world. But well, yeah, that and, makes sense. and the photography matters. I mean, you obviously have to be able to take pictures. Yeah, but. It is, it is going to be more important that the person can look at your face and you don't irritate them Yeah, for whatever Completely. reason. I even, <laughs> just a great example. Of an irritating like, face. Yeah. Like, do you know, do you know Zach, Zach Walters who tours yeah. with Ed Sheeran? Like he messaged he, me because of this. No way. Yeah. He's an amazing guy. Amazing guy. And he, he was a graphic designer and he'd never really like he'd done it like a little bit of photography like as a hobby but wasn't like a professional photographer but he grew up in the same town as Ed Sheeran and Ed like wanted somebody on tour who yeah. he knew he could trust and especially as a superstar that big like it's all about trust and bringing somebody into your circle is such a massive thing and Zach, he, Zach basically bought a camera and went on tour and like learned on the job and like his photos are amazing but like but the thing that got him the job over like his photos being great as they are but he got that job over somebody who was more experienced because he was able to he gelled with Ed and luckily yeah. he had an opportunity to like he, he knew him beforehand and it like it does come down sometimes to who you know and which situations you end up in and uh, but but like it, it wouldn't it wouldn't have mattered what his photos looked like except for the fact that ed was like this is a guy that i want on the road with me you know and I, you, i'm sure you guys have seen it it's not just the artists it's like if you've got a 30 person crew on the road if like if one person doesn't gel in the group mm -hmm. it affects it affects the whole way the tour runs um no agree so yeah it's, absolutely. A, it's an organism it's a it's like a collaborative organism on all all, all fronts completely and i think using yeah. him as an example is a great one because like, like he just seems like a really good guy. And like you said, with somebody like Ed Sheeran, the biggest risk they're taking is bringing somebody else's personality, ego, or whatnot, or mm -hmm. decision-making into their crew. And they can't risk having somebody who's going to, you know, sell Ed's photos, private photos to something, or make a bad judgment yeah. call. You know, or whatever. a great Ed Sheeran story is Christy Goodwin, who has a book out of Ed Sheeran photos. And the first time she met him, he was playing upstairs at a pub. 
Well, yeah. And the I'm power sure. went out. <laughs> so he left. And the first thought was it was pitch dark. And the first thought was, well, we're done. We can't shoot. And next thing you know, you hear Ed Sheeran. Mm-hmm. He'd switch from an electric to an acoustic in a dark room with no power and started playing anyway. Yeah, he seems like a badass, huh? He's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So like the guy, Jamal Edwards, that I sent from SPTV that inspired me. Yeah. He was like one of the first guys to ever give Ed a shot. And like Ed like lived on his, his couch for a bit. And um, when he was like had no money. And w- one thing that Ed did to stand out in the beginning was um, all the grime artists that uh, Jamal was shooting. There were there were a million guys in London going to open mics playing with acoustic guitars and mm-hmm. um, playing the same kind of music that Ed Sheeran was playing at the time but he was like i'm not going to stand out at those nights so i'm going to go to a grime night where it's just like 15 like hardcore rappers in the, in the <laughs> basement and then he's going to come on and play a few songs and everybody goes who's the guy the ginger kid with the guitar and then he instantly stood in, and then all of a sudden he was like singing hooks on grime songs and that's so that cool. got him ahead and it's like finding ways to make yourself stand out i think in any kind of creative line of work is is great yeah yeah agreed well, that's cool. I'm glad we drew all those. I like your example. I really think that your example of him is so spot on, and it's a really uh, it's a really hard thing to explain to people because nobody wants to hear that, you know, the craft they've been spending all their time on is the least important part of getting these jobs. But it's definitely a good thing to be able to discuss. Mm. Um, yeah, cool. And I, 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 just looking at your portfolio and the vast amount of people you've worked with in some capacity, uh, I knew that this was going to be like a good guess. I, I know it's uh, because of because of and I, I oh yeah you can see Steve's pulling up her portfolio right now but it's some really cool stuff I like the Conor McGregor stuff it's beautiful great job um, thank you actually, actually the Conor McGregor stuff was fascinating to me because like this right here shows a portrait style that's super classic yeah like I was looking through your You've Instagram got, it's got a really too. good eye you got a very good eye it shows man that's awesome you have a thank great you. eye for composition uh, for all of that but just when you just look at normal portraits right yeah. you have this kind of Oh, that was in the classic. Book. Even on your candids like this, you have this classic uh, uh, photographer type vibe to all of your stuff that I just love. Yeah, it's, so it's, 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 well. it's refreshing. It's very fresh. It's very natural looking. What do you shoot with mostly? Do you have a certain lens you like the most? Is thirty? Yeah. Um, mostly, uh, I've I only have like four lenses. Um. Mm-hmm. I have a 24 to 105, uh, a 50, a 35, and a 135 f2. And like the 135 f2 only comes out like 1% at the time. So, like, say that's a restriction. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say most of like almost all of these shots that you're pulling up are, are like just a 50 mil. Yeah, the like one a, that's up right now, do you know what you shot this with? Yeah, that was a 50 mil 1.4 Canon, I believe. You're, on a, you're on processing a 5D Mark on this, the grain. Everything about this could be in a 1950s or 60s <laughs> Time magazine. Seriously, this it's that freaking good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Steve says this to everybody. Up. It's it's not just don't worry. He says it to everyone. <laughs> no. it's a big and by life. the way, the fact that you put Red Rock under landscapes, <laughs> two points. Red Rock. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Jermuck, we had a. What's Dermot Kennedy's photographer's name? Lucy? No. Uh, Lucy Foster. Yeah, she's one of my best friends. Yeah, yeah she she best. was on here on the like the we do like a hangout with like a bunch of photographers. She's also like mm. his cousin. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was so, like she had the. I loved hearing her stories because her story was so unique. I was like, yeah, he's my cousin. I yeah. just toured with him. I was like, that is cool. Yeah, that's so interesting. She's that's cool. Your friend. So good. She's and such, very such good. Such a hard worker and yeah she she's from like 15 minutes down the road from me so um and like i knew dermot from dublin because he performed for my youtube channel when when i was younger and oh so, wow uh, that's cool. every, everybody in ireland knows each other yeah. yeah is it is ireland um it's so hard being from the u.s and grasping the concept of a, like i don't know your country is like your areas are so much smaller than ours and it's really hard yeah. to think about that and be like oh yeah everybody here knows each other like wait what <laughs> but it's such a you i don't know it'd be like saying yeah, everybody so like, you go there's for thir- like there's 32 counties in ireland okay the, the, pop- the population is like uh just under six million i think and 
Dublin is like the smallest county of 32 and over a quarter of the people are in Dublin. So like I can drive across Dub like the whole of Dublin in 30 minutes. Wow. And a, a, and like a quarter of the people are there. So like it's pretty, it's pretty small. Um, and like Dublin, there's Dublin, there's Cork, Belfast, maybe Galway. They're kind of the only places where there are like, when I say like a big size venue, I mean like, I mean like, you could fit 500 people in a room. Yeah, yeah. Um, like Dublin obviously has like an arena and a few theatres and stuff. But once you go outside Dublin, it's hard to find like massive um, venues. So like kind of the, the only places really you could make it like you could do music photography feasibly in Ireland are like Dublin, Cork and Belfast. And even then, like I, I couldn't live in Ireland and work as a music photographer full time because there just isn't enough work because there's just not enough shows and not enough people go into the shows. And um, so, yeah, it's quite small. And like all of the photographers here know each other and all the musicians know each other. But it makes for a really like beautiful community. You have that right. awesome venue, like the Oly is it Olympia or am I saying that? Yeah, dude, yeah, that, the Olympia Theater. That venue. Miranda just brought that one up too, Olympia Theater. Oh yeah, dude, so that beautiful. venue is like. I went. I actually went to Dublin on St. Patty's Day. We had a really? show there with All Time Low in like 2014, and it was the craziest. Your parade is awesome. Like that is. I don't know. I don't know if you, you guys like it. Like I don't know if it's like. Do you guys like it? The parade as well, being from there, or like is that pride, or do you very guys not few. Very few Irish people go to the parade. Okay. Like, if you go to the parade, like, it's, it's like, 90% Americans. Really? And then 10%, Interesting. like, tourists from other places. So yeah, I just Amer do a bad Americans, thing. Americans love Ireland. Like, <laughs> they love Ireland, um, which is amazing. Uh, but, yeah, Irish people usually kind of, like, go to, like, a like a local pub like, like we gotta get out of here all the americans are coming to town is that like a <laughs> just it's just the city's so small and like yeah. with the amount of tourists that come for it like you just you just can't move yeah so like there's no point in even trying because you just you just won't, will not get a seat in a pub you will not get served trying to get to the um, venue that day was a dis was a disaster it's i can imagine yeah because the whole main street's shut down um that's like an awesome you have to come here for your beer too yeah <laughs> we, yeah we, we love our whiskey too yeah steve you want to pull um, up the shot we can keep talking but you want to pull it up i can definitely do that yeah well that's cool all right well i'm sorry i sounded like such an american saying it was i just want no, to don't apologize <laughs> don't apologize all right i'm not sorry but i'm american <laughs> uh, this is the unedited shot for but this, yeah, is, this like, is the uh, this is the the raw um yeah. well steve does this podcast thing it's called not podcast thing it's called behind the shot dot tv he's been doing it for a long time but he takes people for an hour or so and talks about, you know, everything about the shot. So we're going to do an abridged version today. But I'll basically let Steve take it from here. Thank you for letting me interview you and tell me about your story. It's really nice to hear, and I appreciate, appreciate your time. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've got so many questions for you about the way that you shoot. Because like I say, there are some things that you do. In fact, I think I actually still have this one up. Let me see. Like this right here. This yeah. shot is is kind of a summary of how you shoot to me. The way you have Haley Steinfeld in the back centered with people and arms around her making a frame kind of within a frame. And I kind of see you do that here. You're positioning where you are in the crowd, where you've got the runway, where you've got the flames in the back. When you're, when you're shooting, I want to focus, first of all, specifically on shooting from the crowd. Mm -hmm. Is there something when you choose your position in a crowd that you're thinking about or looking for? Did I mean, did you get to choose this? <laughs> um, I kind of got to, so yeah, I was talking to Adam before this. So I wasn't, um, I got, I was given a photo pass to shoot the first three at this show. Like Drake's like my favorite artist and I'd wanted to shoot him forever. So like I asked the promoter, like, could I, hey, please, can I have a photo pass to shoot this show? And we got there and Drake's team were like, we're not doing first three. We're doing, you can shoot song four, seven <laughs> and nine and nine. Those are all from, pitch black. <laughs> from the back, from the back row of the upper circle. Yeah. So like you you need like a 500 mil lens right. just to see anything, and those those songs finished. And I've been I like I'm obviously a massive as you said a massive Drake fan, and I've been looking at his Instagram and I like I knew what the show looked like and I knew roughly like kind of the elements that were going to happen throughout the show. And 
if you see in this photo, like to the left, um, in the middle of that circle, there's like a black square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That 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 blows up into like a massive globe. So that cool. fills like the whole thing, and it's, it it has like stuff projected on it from inside the globe, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when when it got to sh like song nine, and we finished, like the globe hadn't even. He hadn't even moved out to the B stage yet. And I was like, I cannot leave. Like I came here to, to shoot that. I cannot leave without that. And um, yeah, they reluctantly like let me stay to like to watch the show um, after the, because they knew how much of a fan I was. And uh, <laughs> I went I, I went down and I was just like standing in the crowd. And like, I, I, I didn't want to get in trouble. And I, well, I didn't want to take my camera out. And the way the venue was laid out, like I'm, I'm directly between Drake and his tour manager, like behind me on a platform watching. So it's like, if I take my camera out, I'm like busted. I'm busted straight away. So I was like, I'm just gonna enjoy the show for the next like thirty minutes and just see what happens. And if a moment happens where I feel like I really need to get this shot and I can't help myself, I'll like whip the camera out for like thirty seconds and just fire off a few frames, um, and hope I don't get seen. And this was. This is one of those, like I saw he, he ran out to the B stage and I was like, oh, this is the moment it's going to happen. And it was just before the globe blew up and you got just tackled. The, camera out. the uh, I was actually I was like, say, I, yeah, there did, was a, did they there attack was, you? I, no, no, they didn't see. But like there was a, there was a, so what, what he's doing with the gun fingers there, he was like starting mosh pits like around oh, the B stage. That's cool. And I was like in the middle of the mosh pit, like trying to get my camera out of my bag and uh, getting thrown around and um yeah i basically just kind of like no scope that just kind of started firing off did you just um, use a call of duty term that's great <laughs> yo i just yeah. no scope drake <laughs> <laughs> uh i didn't play call of duty oh, well, but um Fortnite. i but i just know from friends yeah but um <laughs> i yeah i just started i just started firing and um this was one of them and it was kind of one of those things where you shoot like a burst of like 10 and like nine of the shots like suck and there's like one in the middle where you right. caught the right moment which i think is like i'm all for like traditional shoot and film and like film looks amazing but that's just something you, you cannot do unless you're shooting digital where you just cause it had happened to me so many times when i'm shooting a show where like you just hold the shutter for 20 seconds because you know a moment's happening and all of the shots suck but one of them's like amazing and I, I love that about digital but uh yeah i just love the way he's like silhouetted here you can see like a little bit of his face the lights like wrapping around his arms really nicely Um, i like the slight bit of motion blur in his hand and um, gives like a little bit of energy so i like you, you you just hit everything because i don't want to throw away that that you can see a little bit of his face that's key to me it's a great silhouette, but the fact that you can see a little bit of his face mm. is what gives you the three dimension of him. It, it's what what adds life to him. And you all, you said something else I'm interested about. I'm actually curious. You said you had already, you know, been familiar with his Instagram, so you knew the show. Yeah. So when you are shooting three from the pit of a of a band you like or or you know artist that you don't know, mm. or for that matter, an artist you're going on tour with. Yeah. What's your research consist of? Um, luckily, when I've been touring with artists, like usually at the very start of a tour, you get like a couple of days of like tech rehearsals where like they're running the lights and um, the band are just like getting used to playing the songs on stage. And so you have like a little bit of a feel for how the show is going to go. But I think like the first few shows of any tour, the main thing is like figuring out the moments and like a lot of artists, even if it's an unchoreographed show, like find a groove and they tend to do like similar things and similar songs and um, just naturally. And it's trying to like read the artist and learn what they're going to do next and um, work out where the best parts of the venue to be for each song. And then like usually like the first show, like I'm taking tons of notes, like I'll get a set list and in between songs, I like write down what happened in each song and what the light, what color the lights were, and what's happening on the lights and where he is on the stage or he or she is mm -hmm. on the stage, and and then the next kind of two or three shows are figuring out like work, working out those locations, um, and yeah, that's the beauty of like shooting a tour where you get to shoot the same show over and over again. You get to like really figure out the show and figure out the best parts of it. 
when, when you when you've got a shot like this like mm -hmm. captain lasagna connor said he loves the grandness of it and, and how immersed you are in the crowd and mm -hmm. uh i forget who it was said something about the energy in the crowd um granted you're not looking here you're you're no scoping it but <laughs> in a normal crowd shot what are you thinking of composition wise of you know blending you know how much how much arms you want how much heads you want how much crowd you want mm. versus how much flames you want what's your composition thought when you're doing these these you know full spectrum shots of a, of a venue um i guess i'm kind of like i'm usually looking for drama and um, looking for something that like there's movement or excitement something that makes you feel like you're in the show mm -hmm. um and trying to capture what i feel like in that moment i suppose um and for me, like if I like if I was just at this show as like a an audience member, I, like this is kind of where I'd want to watch the show from. Yeah. And I think that's that's what I kind of look for. I look for the part in the in the crowd where I would most want to watch the show from. It's nice um, you're such a fan. I feel like you could really feel what right. everybody yeah. wants when you're a fan, rather than just being there because you want to shoot. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and, and that's like, that's key. Do Do you ever shoot a if you shoot an artist you don't know yeah i'm assuming you listen to their music and get to know them because to me knowing the songs as they're being sung mm. changes how i shoot it completely like i all my best shots are of people that i'm really into mm -hmm. because you you're able as i said you're able to kind of read them a little bit because you know a little bit about them even if you haven't shot them before um and you're just kind of you get into like you get into a zone or like a vibe with the music if you if you like it and like like my photography is definitely inspired by the music that's playing during mm -hmm. the show and i like i shoot a rock show completely differently i think than i shoot like a a rap show or a singer songwriter show and it's it's it, very it, much do yeah, me a favor different. expand on that what do you mean by that how, how do you shoot rock differently from hip-hop or rap i'm just like i'm very i don't know it's hard to talk about because like I feel like I'm just winging it all of the time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just, I'm like, it's, I, I'm very reactionary. Like I feel like, like I, when I'm in the pit or I'm side stage or I'm out in the crowd, like I'm always like reacting to how the artist is performing on stage. And like a, a rapper is gonna perform differently to somebody holding a guitar just naturally. And I like I, I feel like you have to shoot somebody holding a guitar from certain angles because of the way the neck crosses them and if they're holding if they're left-handed or if they're right-handed it's going to look different and it's going to frame differently and whereas like somebody like a rapper or a pop star who's like just holding a microphone as running around on the stage and um, you maybe have more more angles and there aren't mic stands in the way and you have to react to that and I don't know I feel like I just react to every artist like differently and um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to explain <laughs> it. It kind of feels, uh, I, I don't know. I kind of get into that like kind of creative flow where like you're not really thinking about anything else except exactly what you're doing when I'm shooting. So it's, right. hard, it's hard to like think back and think, what was I thinking when I took this? But it's very much, I'm, ju I'm just reacting to what's in front of me. So um, yeah. With, with like for me, a lot of times, especially if you've got a vocalist in a, in a band per se more towards the rock end, they might have a guitar they they work a mic different but yeah. if you're dealing with a rapper they tend to hold the mic closer they may change hands less with a mic mm. do, do you do you get granular in how you study an artist like for example they always hold the mic in their right hand so i know that i want to be you know stage left when i'm photographing mm. them to get you know more mount i mean do you think about that or do you yeah just for kinda, sure like if you if you look at the photographs, I I don't know if you can see them there, but I I photographed Kendrick Lamar who like holds his mic like super close to his face. Um, yeah, there, here we go. And like, I had yeah, to shoot. Love that. I had to shoot. I had to shoot from oh, the side man. because he holds it so. Like if you're from if you're in the pit, you're you're not seeing any of his face because he also tilts the microphone up a little bit sometimes. So like his fist and the mic are just like completely. You get the mic face. nose, yeah. Yeah, and even like I toured a hosier last year who 
um, he he has like his main microphone and then he has a, a separate microphone, like a real old school bluesy mic with a lot of distortion on it for a certain few songs. But the, he like insisted on leaving the microphone like directly beside the main mic for the whole show. And then he just pulls it in for those two songs. But it meant that for like the whole tour, I couldn't shoot him from stage right. Because if I was stage right, that microphone was blocking his face. And they're the kind of things that you kind of have to adjust to. So this was another one. Oh, whoops. Where okay. I wasn't, where I, no, just the whole shoot where I wasn't okay. really, su- I wasn't supposed to be on stage, but nobody told me. I love me. that close I was, up. I was already up there. And, this one? Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, But yeah, you just kind of have to work with, I don't know, just work with what you got. I feel like I'm trying to develop a real concise answers here to questions that I don't really know the answer to. And I'm just, That's okay. it. You, it can be, it can be literally an answer of, I like the color blue, you know, I'm curious. This shot just strikes me. There's something about this shot and I'm curious how much of this was you mm. after the shot. So the stage in this particular shot is this nice warm color. Mm. He's this nice warm color. The lighting is coming off a nice comfortable. And then not just the sky, but the sky and the crowd are super cool color. Was a lot of that in post or was that how it was? No, that's exactly how it was. Wow. This was like, there's, I, this, this is one of the shoots that I kind of edited, did the least amount of editing on ever because I like for that reason, I was just like, I like how this looks pretty it's straight gorgeous. on the camera. Um, that was like a perfect night where he came on like just, the sun was just after setting and it's like just in that blue hour. And it was probably the most amazing performance I've ever seen. And the, the crowd were like every single person at that festival was there to see Kendrick. And this was in the first song and it just the energy was off the charts. And it was just one of those things where every single thing, the lighting, the energy, the, the artist, the crowd, like everything just fell perfectly into place. And I just happened to be there to capture it. Like I played a very small part in that. Um, but sometimes that's, they're the moments you're looking for, you know? So putting you on the spot before we mm. get you to edit. Now that we know the story behind how you were in this position, that you had management behind you, that you were, or, or whatever, that you were worried were armed and dangerous if they <laughs> saw you shooting. If you were to shoot this show again with yeah. access, without that worry, yeah, what would you have done differently? Because you, you have captured the to me, you captured the story here, right? You even, you've got the balloons up top. You've got the speakers, the flown speaker stack. What would you capture or do differently in your head? Um, I think because I've already got it from here, I would focus a lot less on the crowd. And like, I'm very reluctant to get into the crowd um, when I'm shooting shows for work um, because to get into a position like this, it takes a long time and it usually will take like a full song to get here. Mm. And then I'll be there for a song. And you're also kind of like, if you're in the crowd and you're sticking a camera up, you're kind of blocking people's view. And that's something I never really want to do in a show. And and then it might it'll probably take me another song to get out and get back to where I need to be for the next song. So that's like three songs for one shot. And you kind of have to be very economical with your time when you're shooting shows where um, I, I'm not sure what, sh- what song came before and after this, but um, yeah, maybe like I would, if it was a, like a 25 show tour, I might assign like one night where I specialize, where like I specifically go out to do crowd shots and I know that that's what I'm trying to get tonight. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I shoot shows very differently. If I, won't, if I know I'm only shooting the show once, you have to be very careful with your time and where, but if I know that I'm shooting a whole tour, I can be, um, I can spread it out a bit more, but I think I'd probably be in like the pit around the the B stage. Cause he doesn't allow any other photographers in there. Mm. So I know that that's going to be a perspective that one, the crowd isn't going to get except for the front row and no other photographers are going to get it. So I'll probably have a higher chance of getting a shot that people won't have seen before. And looking up on all mm. that stuff would be wild. Yeah, completely. Yeah, um, and exactly. He, he, I, I think I think something that rappers do a lot is they kind of am I cutting out again? No, you're yeah, good. Sorry, can you hear me? No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah, rappers kind of like crouch crouch down to like the front row and stuff a lot. And Drake was doing that a lot. And I love being in the pit and when an artist like crouches down towards you and 
they're like really big in the frame and you get all the drama behind them. And I think that's something I would have loved to have gotten here. And I know that those look like balloons, guys, but they aren't balloons. They're actually balls on cables with lights inside of them that move up Mm. and down independently of each other, correct? Those are like, it's like a crazy Interesting. Yeah, those aren't, It's, it's a really crazy setup he had. The show is unbelievable. Yeah. Every every tour he does just gets like bigger and better and the production is insane. Yeah. Well, and that's what this shot says. This shot shows you all the production elements. Yeah. So some of them. <laughs> but it oh, is yeah. yeah. No, it does it I would say like I didn't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying like, yeah, it shows you all of the stuff that you would possibly see at once. You've got the stage, you've got the roof, you've got the pyro, you've got the crowd, you've got the lights, you got the, right? Yeah. Pyro, it's got a lot of stuff got, in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh just wonderful. I'm I'm dying to see what you would do with this. Okay. Shall we add it? Yeah, yeah. Share your share your screen. Okay. This is my first time doing this. Let me see if this works. That's all good. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. You're good. So I believe that when I was editing this the first time, I I think I just used like a Visco filter. Yeah. Um Team Visco. like uh, that's what I did like what I used for the first few years when I was editing um, and kind of look, tried to go into the Visco filters and kind of work out what they were doing. Um, but I like, I had a Visco filter that I loved where like, I'm sure you guys know as well, like shooting sometimes with red light can be an absolute nightmare. Mm-hmm. And I had like, red is like my favorite color and I love yeah. shooting shows that are in red. And if I can get it right, I love it. Yes. And there was like, there was one specific Visco filter that just made like the reds and yellows in photos pop, but kept the image like super, super natural. It mm-hmm. didn't really do much except like make those reds look really nice. I cannot remember what filter it was. So I can't email go and Visco. find it now. Email Visco. I'll find it. I yeah. think it might've been like, I think it was one of the Kodak gold ones. Um, whatever way it handled the reds was lovely but usually like when I go into like a filter like that I'll just go and I'll bring like I'll take off the grain I'll take off like most of what it's doing except for the bits that I really like and then I'll start redoing those things how I do like if that makes sense um, but yeah on my left here I've got like filters or presets um, from different shoots that I've done yeah. Um, so when I was on tour with Marin Morris last year, I was going through a bit of a colors crisis where I was shooting everything. I was editing everything in black and white because I had no idea how I wanted my colors to look. Like this isn't and, how I want it. <laughs> and um, yeah, and one day I was like messing around with somebody else's filter and like, or preset and like changing this and changing that and trying to just desperately get to where I wanted them. Um, yeah, so like Marin one is kind of, the fil- the the preset that I use for like most things now most live shows um it's like my starting point I'll t- that's the first thing I try and sometimes it doesn't work at all but like instantly I throw that on and it 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 makes my it gives me the reds that I like I don't like my reds to be like super like I like them to be slightly orange yeah and that's what that does here so that's before and after um I like very high contrast images. Yes. But like without without crushing the blacks and blowing the whites too high. Um, so like if you look at the curve here, you've got like super uh, dark blacks, but then like the like very low mids are kind of brought back up to balance out. So it's just the black blacks that are being brought down. Um, and then the whites are being brought back here. Um, I start, I'm, I'm liking clipping whites a bit recently and adding a bit of color into them. I'm, I'm enjoying a softer image. I think I've, as I've been doing like a lot more portraiture recently, mm-hmm. actually haven't, I haven't been shooting an awful lot of shows. Well, nobody has for the last while, but <laughs> even, even in the months previous, um, I was on like promo tours with artists. So I was shooting a lot more portraits than I was um, shooting shows. Um, and like high contrast, but really, really bright reds don't really work for portraits as well and i've started to like enjoy a softer image a little bit so like if i was doing it now maybe i'd start like what? i'd i'd fade the shadows a teeny bit when um you're, when you're looking at this image i know we went right into editing but like what are your like do you ever start by like cropping it or thinking like like yeah. thinking about the big big picture like what are your thoughts before you actually hit the computer if that makes sense yeah so straight away straight away in this i can see that the horizon is off Mm -hmm. um which sometimes can be fine but also i'm like such a stickler where i have to have 
like if it's an image like this where he's the center point like he has to be like directly in the center of the image yeah and nice. that will that will really really I like really that. annoy me if he's not yeah um and i was really one of the things that i was raging with this photo is i've got like so much like black down here that isn't really telling much of a story yeah and then um the some of the production of the top is cut off i wish i'd like aimed a little bit higher so that this center line was like more on it on the bottom third um and that annoyed me and i don't i don't like when an artist like directly and i want them to like in central in a horizontal plane but not necessarily central on a vertical so i remember when i did this image i actually did it 16 9 because i thought it looked quite cinematic so that but you that, can pull him that, off that, the center line that allowed me to bring this horizon line onto the bottom third. Oh yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I did. And that way I didn't lose any of the, I think it also like it gave the image more width naturally. Um, and uh, like when I did video, when I started off, like I wanted to be a cinematographer and so I love like cinematic looking images and, um, that's well, the 69 that's emphasizes the width of what you're seeing the, the, yeah grandioseness of what you're seeing but pulling him down i love an old quote dead center is deadly yeah you know, yeah yeah pulling him down is much more comfortable and gives gives everything room to expand completely yeah and that way i can get rid of some of this like black at the bottom that wasn't really doing much yeah um i think in my original edit like this phone was like super distracting to me so i think i just like took a like a adjustment brush and like just colored this in yeah. And just like brought that down to zero. And Nobody's then, gonna miss it. Exactly. Nope. Um, and I think I did the same with this one. And like instantly, that's like so much less distracting. And yeah. um, and then I think like that's pretty much what I did. If I go through this filter, yeah. So the reds are like pulled towards the orange. Could even maybe bring back a little bit more red. Okay, um, looking at that, that's your preset that did that. But did you originally, when you created this preset, you went color by color? You used the target to drag them? No, I didn't go color by color. I this was this was somebody else's preset that I played that around with for like an hour until I got to where I wanted it to be. Gotcha, so like gotcha. to be honest, I can't remember which whose preset it was, and I can't remember which ones I changed. But I do know I changed like the oranges, the reds, the yellows. And um, they're kind of the main ones that I changed. Um, I, I would think the original had like a ton of grain on it. I took that off. Um, uh, this is like, for some reason, this, when I'm doing sharpening, this kind of, uh, kind of horizontal line. So on the amount, like the third notch, and then a slight like horizontal line backwards. I don't know. I don't know what most, I don't know what radius and detail really mean, to be honest. Uh, but I just, from fiddling around with sliders in, in Lightroom, that's usually how I like them to look. Um, sometimes a lot of it in noise reduction, but I think I was only on, what was it, like six, 640 ISO here, so there's not really, there's Which very camera little, little grain. This? 5D Mark Three. Okay. Yeah, 640 uh, is nothing then, yeah. Yeah, so there's not really any grain there. Um, what else do, do you do ever I, do, do lens correction? Yeah, a lot of the time. Um, I feel like in an image like this, it's not going to do too. I kind of like, the sometimes I like things to be dead straight. And if it's like a landscape or if it's a portrait, I'll always do it. But there's something, I actually like it more without my eye, just likes it more without it in this case. Um, and then there's like a slight bit of green in the shadows just so it's not like red, red, red. Mm -hmm. uh, it just adds a, a little bit of kind of- it feels so rich. I like it. Depth. Yeah, it adds a little bit. I don't, I don't know what it, it does. It, but I feel like in, a, in an image where, like this, where it's like primarily based on one color, like adding a little bit of another color that's complementary into a shadow yeah, or into a highlight. Up. Yeah, just, just very subtly, just kind of gives it an extra little bit of kind of color depth and a bit of color contrast that makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, and yeah, complementary colors is something that I think about a lot. Um, so yeah, like obviously you can do whatever you want, but like some people do edit where there's like 
they're adding 10 different colors to like their curve is like adding reds to here and then blues to here and then yellows to here and then pinks to here and then greens to here. It's like your image just has like a million colors that there's not really any reason for any of those colors to be there. And so you want intention behind the color. I think I want intention behind behind as much as possible in the yeah. image. And I think in music photography, where we're not in control of the lighting, we're not in control of what the artist does, we're in control of very little. So it's quite hard to have intention, I think, in music photography, except for like composition and color. So I try and make those kind of elements count. And timing. And timing, yeah, of course. <laughs> like some, um, somebody said that, uh, uh, who was it? Bryn said, it's so awesome how the photo was taken at just the perfect time. So you've mm -hmm. got the stage effects, you've got the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just try and have intention, intention yeah. But uh, a lot of, like, I'm really, really, really liking black and white at the moment. Um, for the last year, like, anytime I can do things in black and white, I'll do it. Um, so maybe I should just do a black and white just to go through it as well. Um, yes, I think please. I even hovered over this one. Ooh. This Everything's is, so is, nice in black and white. It's so tempting. This is, this... Is a, I did a portrait of my friend Molly last year and I saved the preset, but I, this actually just hovering over it is much closer to the original photo than what I've just done. Yeah. Um, where I had like I had a lot more yellow in it and it was a lot more intense. I like the earthy um, tones you just did though. Yeah, black and white. Go on, sorry. I like the earthy tones of your can you hear me? Check, check, one, two, three. Hello. Can you hear me, Steve? I can hear I can you hear just you. fine. You're back now. Okay, You're back fine. now. You're back now. Sorry about that. No, dude, it's all good. It happens. Um, I like the earthy tones of this one. It's so nice. Like the new one you just did. Yeah, like, I like how it's almost like a brownish orange. It's very rich. It's nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to go for like more of like more subtle tones like that. Like I used to be very much like in your face colors. Um, Comes in I'm ways. starting to enjoy richer tones. Um, Looks cinematic Somebody who too. does... Somebody who does uh, Joe Greer um, from New York, street photographer, uh, is like one of my favorite photographers. He's absolutely amazing. And his, his toning really affects how I edit images, even though he doesn't really shoot music. Um, I try and implement a lot of the kind of earthy, warm tones that he has in his portraits into live stuff. Um, but if you don't know his work, we're, we're checking it out. Um, I think I was looking earlier at this kind of- Connor's probably like, finding it right now. I like like right. really super high contrast black and whites. Yeah. Um, straight away, I want more, more realistic white. Um, I'm happy enough to sacrifice a little, like a lot of shadow in here. Um, like straight off the bat, like this was one of those photos where, like I, as I said, Kendrick Lamar one earlier, like I didn't really have to do much to get it to where I wanted it to be. So I feel like I'm uh, not really giving away a lot here. Um. But I like my black and whites to be super contrasty like this and a lot more kind of film the worry. But if I think, I think if I was editing this photo today and I was delivering them, these would be the two alternatives I would give. One thing that's actually bothering me here now is over here, these lights here have like a bit of a purple magenta hue to them. And it's kind of, it's the only part of the image where there's like a magenta and that's bothering me a little bit. So I think if I was, really being picky i'd probably uh is that brush working no why is it not letting me uh mask it'll always do it to you when oh, you're, you're in live. you're in before you, you switched to before mode that's why you hit you hit the Are backslash still? for before I oh sorry i'm on the wrong yeah yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. amateur absolute amateur i'd probably just like add a new brush and color over those areas Who's and then just Joel? Like, it's Joel Greer, J O or Joe Greer, J O E G R E E R. Yeah, but his Instagram is it's I I O E Greer. I O E Greer. Okay, yeah. 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 Connor, who's Joel Gray? <laughs> Armand put a link in and wrote Joel Gray. <laughs> Joel Gray. Great and so that you know, also name. the newest version of for people watching, if you're looking at yours and it's different, the newest version of Lightroom does have a white balance you know, tint and color option in the adjustment brush. So if you see that, that's why. There we go. So yeah, that's just a simple adjustment there before and after on those lights on the right hand side of the screen here where they were magenta and they were, I feel like they're kind of distracting to the eye because it's like a color that's only in that part of the image. And so I just made them like more 
and like RNG. I love watching the um, phone. Come in and go out. Come probably in and go the out. last thing I do. <laughs> uh, and then another thing just with live shots, it, while I'm doing like those kind of adjustments is if there's ever like a light or like something like these little phone lights like right on the edge of the image, yeah. for some reason that like really annoys me and like brings your brings your eye directly to the edge, edge of the image and so like i'll i won't really edit like those little things too much but if they're like right on the edge of the image i'll get rid of them because i like the edges to just be clean, as clean as possible um but yeah i don't really think i'd do much else to this image and um, i think this is where i'd want it the last preset that i see ending in a bw you got talos and then one right underneath that I'm that's just uh, about that. that was the Hollywood Reporter, black and okay. white, and gotcha. that was um, I was shooting the behind the scenes for the Hollywood Reporter roundtable for Oscar season a few months ago, and I obviously it's not showing up any colors, so I must have saved it wrong. Um, but yeah, that's what that one is. Okay. But yeah, these kind of like if I'm like shooting a tour, like this looks like a lot of presets, and it's only from M to, 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 to T. Um, I usually Marin one. Um, recently I'm using Nice to Meet You, which is from um, Niall Horan. Um, I was shooting behind the scenes on his music video for Nice to Meet You. And uh, yeah, it was a preset like I made on that day and I've really loved it since. And it's, it's quite versatile. It works for live stuff and it's really nice for portraits. And again, it's quite like heavily red based but it's, it's a lot more, as I said, um, it's a lot softer than to say this, like the blacks are raised and the whites are, are lowered. Um, how often when you're on, when you're on tour and you're in a hurry to edit, yeah. how often do you just click one of your presets and go, that shot's done? Um, I don't think I've ever just clicked the preset and it's been done. Okay. I'll always, I'll always do something to it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, I don't know. It feels a bit weird to me. Or just like I, I just I, my 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 presets aren't good enough and my photos aren't good enough for that to ever work. Maybe one day I'll have my presets perfected and my photos will be good enough to, in camera that I won't have to do that. If you start but, feeling um, that way, it's probably. I feel like once that goes away, it's like where's my drive? It's like you always you know right. you always want it to be better. I feel like that's just it's not that they aren't yeah. good enough. It's that you just want more. You want to keep improving. That's what I feel. Like. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I like so. what Miranda said. Miranda said Rihanna Paris casual talking about the preset you have for Rihanna. <laughs> yeah. Um that is what it is. Um cool. Well thank you for sharing your edit. Well done. Of course. And um yeah let's uh Steve I know Christian I know you did something that not everybody does but you pulled up some screenshots of your own. Would it would you usually what we do is Steve will like go through the hashtag. Do you just want to kind of point them out when you see them? That way we can. Cut yeah, them. perfect. Is that okay with you? Yeah, do you absolutely. know? Do you know where you pulled them from? Was it from Instagram? Was it from Twitter? Uh, I just saved a couple from Twitter before this, just in case. Okay. Um, but but uh, but Instagram, there were so many amazing ones on Instagram too. So it's probably easier if you just scroll through and we just sounds good. Let me share. Yeah, any you want to talk about, we'll pull them up and we can talk about them. So and I have to just say, oh oh, if we ever hit a week where Nate Hill doesn't do an edit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak out because he just goes so next level. <laughs> yeah, this was super interesting. And I'd love to know, like, did he, did, is this his hand? Did he, he take this photo? Yeah. So I, he's a, he's like a visual artist on Instagram. Uh, he makes some crazy stuff in Photoshop. So I'm assuming he just photoshopped insane. together. Yeah. What's funny though, is that almost looks like an, an original iPhone or like an iPhone three. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? It's just like really, yeah. He is. He is. Wild. I love that. I love that. It's such an interesting. I, like if if it fits perfectly with the Odin said the shot because yeah, Odin, go on. Odin said he took the photo of his hand. Odin's a friend of his, and he's awesome. okay. Cool. Yeah. So um, creative. Yeah, so people got crazy on the colors. Yeah. It's yeah, I I think it was the perfect like image for that where you can was there was there, you can change that red to whatever you want. Yeah. Was there what any, I love though is. Let's go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. I was just say, was there anything across the board like that you noticed that maybe didn't stand out to you before that you saw most people did or didn't do that you were surprised? Do you know? Is there any like general overall feeling that you have from it? Um, 
Yeah, I was really interested to see people uh, go for like a cooler tone and like completely switch it up because obviously it's such a warm photo and it, it feels like the photo's like on fire. And yeah. um, seeing people like switch switch it up and go for like, as you can see here, Fernando's um, take with the purples. And uh, some people, there was, there was one particular one on Instagram that I actually don't know how I'd find now, but I thought it was really beautiful. It was like super blue, like completely changed up the whole image. And I thought it was I'm really I'm in a really photo stunning. pit with this guy all the time. <laughs> Jay. Um, no way. Yeah. Jay McAteer, lovely edit. He's yeah. In Southern California um, with me. Very dramatic. Steve, super you want to meet up and hang out in a photo pit sometime? Just like a social Yeah, let's do it. Just like, wait, there's no concert. Wait, do you take pictures? Yeah. No, I mean, just, <laughs> I'm saying not like at a concert. Oh, not just, just hang like at a pit. Yeah, I'm game. Okay, cool. Oh, that black I was and white. I was thinking of putting yeah, like see, a I, venue I love the black and white. The, yeah, I love the black and white too. What'd you say? It Christian? does look though, just so that uh who is this, Elise? It too kind of looks like you like you burned the yeah. back down. And if you're gonna burn, you have to zoom in because there's you left a halo around his arm and around his body. Just make For sure. Me as well, them. like I love a really contrasty black and white. Like there's a lot of mm -hmm. it, it feels like the shadows have maybe been lifted a little bit too much. Yeah. Um and like when you're sharpening in an image like this, if you if you sharpen the crowd, and I think that's something that a lot of people did, like went like really like like clarity one hundred, yeah, um, <laughs> where like which add like clarity adds a lot of drama to an image like this. But I feel like he is the center point, and the crowd are secondary in this instance. Yeah, and if you if you put too much sharpening on people's arms, all of a sudden, and the phones, you've got you've got so many so many points of interest in the image that are super crisp and sharp and clear and clear trying to like fight for your attention. Um, and then this is the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, I like, I think when I take a photo, like, and when I'm editing a photo, I try and think very clearly, like what, where do I want people's eyes to go immediately when they look at this image? And if there's anything that's taking people's eyes away, um, which, which in this case, a lot of people like overly, I think sharpened the crowd. Well, yeah, they just that, do that for me. Your eyes will almost always go to the brightest spot in an image. Yeah. And they'll go to or the most and or the most saturated spot. And if you don't know where so, some images, it can be hard to tell. Like if you just get a normal you know, shot like this, you may not even realize. I mean, here it's obvious the flame. Hmm. If you want to know where the brightest spot in your image is, uh, command right or left bracket in Lightroom will spin your image around. Turn it upside down and look at it. If your image is up that See side down, you shapes. You'll, Great yeah, idea, you'll see yeah. it in shapes, exactly. Yo, uh, what was I going to say? I this like what you said about like Photoshopping, you know, I think what, I really people are, like this one. what people are doing is they're throwing like a blanket edit over everything and that's where they're right. coming, to, coming to have yeah. a hard time with sharpening too much. Very global. And that's, yeah. you know, use yeah. the adjustment brush. That's why it's there. Totally, totally. I think a lot of people as well, like really like blew out the highlights behind them as well yep. and even like there was one a couple back where the blacks were like quite soft and tell me when you see it it's right down there again. keep no no keep oh, going no. up sorry, I'm wrong. sorry. I'm wrong. Up. Uh, the one with the with the crazy blur on it oh with um, the blur yeah just an example i thought it was um, the one down there oh yeah yeah there. this one where like nothing no in this, solid no, black no, there's no solid black, which is fine, and I love that sometimes. But the, if I feel like if I go, there's no well, there's no solid black. I try for there to be no solid white, so okay. it's like so that it so that it feels somewhat balanced. Right. And even if even if it's just a tiny clipping a of tip. the white, um, this feels like there's no solid black, um, to quite an extreme. Like the blacks are quite blue, but then the whites are like so blown. And to right. me, it it, feel, it feels like the bot that like the top of the image, like is is burnt. If you know what I mean. Yeah. No, you're um, right. Yeah. No, I, so, I, um, I completely see it. Let me get down here. This was. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to fit it into the paper tear. Instagram story. Oh yeah. Um, All right. So let me go. Let me jump over to. Uh, here we go. No, wasn't there one that was like, was it Odin or somebody made it like spinny? Do you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of cool. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, that one was cool. I think. Um, hold on, let me just have a look at which I, are the ones. The that difference I, I, I see. Yeah, if you say their names, like some people went more realistic colors, other people stayed with the flame kind of hue behind it. You know, staying more warm. Um, everybody saw this picture so differently, and this one wow. they flipped it. 
That's so weird to see flipped. It changes it's the whole image. The whole image. Uh, maybe will I? I have six here that I saved from Twitter that I thought were really interesting that I we didn't look at there. Maybe I could pull those up. Okay. Uh, let me see if this works. Uh, I was going to pull something up, and I here was one. Uh, where was you see one? my? What am I looking at? Can you guys see? Uh, let me stop my share. Yeah, yours. Oh, uh, no, nope, let me stop mine, and then we can get yours up there. Oh, that's cool. I thought this one was great. Who is this? Uh, Do you have it? Is this a screenshot? Do we have whose it is? I don't know. It is a screenshot, and I can. Well, I love that. Uh, it says Annie, Annie, or I am. It was in response to your original tweet. Yeah, I see at the top, twitter.com. Well, slash also I am tag oh, yeah. the raw yeah. editing challenge, but I, didn't I see am it. Neil Hazel. Yeah, that one's um, awesome. I love that. He cropped it into the square, but then he like took the the um the flame from behind and copied it across. I feel like maybe he could have been a bit cleaner with his clone stamping, but but I like the created, vibe. But it, yeah, it created a really really nice contrast where like like a yin and yang top, like white at the top and black at the bottom, and Drake yeah. like per perfectly splits it, creates a really dramatic silhouette. The slight like yellow tint to the whole image that uh, just makes it a little bit more interesting. And just the separation, black and white. the separation of the white top and the dark bottom isn't yeah. like where his head is; it's mid body. Yeah. But I'm glad you brought up the the cloning too because there's a lot of potential in this shot. Yeah, if the cloning was clean, completely. Yeah, and that's something. It's like an acid watch uh, or something. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really interesting. And um, that was one that I really, I really could, stood out. To I me. would never see a photo and be able to think I could do this. <laughs> like you know, like it's so cool to see that somebody interprets it that way. This so this girl, uh, Zianya. I can. I, I hope I'm not butchering her name. Is from Dublin. Um, Zianja, I think she pronounced it. Um, yeah, a beautiful photographer from Dublin. Her work is amazing. If uh, we're we'll checking check it out, out. yeah, her I, think her, I think I think her Instagram handle is the same as her Twitter handle here. Um, and this is like very sim. Oh, hold on, yeah, very similar to like the original tones yeah, that right. I did in in my one. And um, if you look at like she always gets like her grain like super beautiful and. I don't know, just she, her tones like really inspire me a lot when I'm looking at live music photography. Um, and I feel like this was a really, really nice one. And maybe like I would have darkened the crowd personally a little bit more, but um, yeah, a lot of drama in this. Um, and then I feel like this one is like uh, from Jeremy Sobokan, is that his name? Um, is like, I feel like this is quite similar to the edit that I just did. Like Jeremy is early. on here every week. This guy. All the time. Every Killing week. it, Jeremy. Yeah, Killing it, Jeremy. Jeremy. I love this. Like really earthy reds and oranges, soft whites, deep blacks. Um, and then like there's some green in there, like even like like I did. Um, yeah, and this this one really, really, really stood out to me. Um, very tasteful, in my opinion. Big fan. Um, and then yeah, a couple of other people who like similar to Zanja's were they were kind of quite close to my original one, which I really like and um, very warm. Um, that to me, this is how that moment felt in the room, um, which I think is great. Um, and awesome. for somebody who, who wasn't at the show to nail it that well. Yeah, it's, right. hard, it's hard to so, edit a photo and get the correct vibe when you weren't, you didn't experience it, you know? Yeah. Th this one was uh, a kind of an interesting twist. What is that? Up yeah, there? Actually, cool. not so much the text to me, but they brought the shadows up on his face. Oh, so yeah, see. and like his clothes are the only black blacks in the oh, right yeah. thing, which makes him stand out quite well. Which, right. um, which was kind of a, a neat way to to see the image. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got? Like this was this guy's actually a podcaster too. This is Clay. Uh, Clay, my lens. Also a nice material. Yeah. Also very nice material for uh, very nice material. Yeah. Uh, so we got that one. So what? yeah, there were some there were some really nice creative twists. Where's on... Odin? Oh, there's Odin. Go up, go up. There you go. Not this one. Well, this one's cool too, but it's like to the right of your picture, Steve. Right here. Or it's not Odin. It's somebody else. No, this that's one, uh... I th that's cool though. I like that. It kind of. I don't know. This doesn't work for most images, but I like that it pulls you right into the middle, and it doesn't make me yeah. feel sick. They masked it really well too. It's on the arm. It's not as much on his body. Yeah, I wish it's actually kind of a nice radial bl blur. It's not bad. I like that. Which one were you talking about? 
Oh, look was, at this one. That's all it was. Well, they went deep. That's another whole image. This looks. Yeah. This reminds me of like a like a basketball player shot where it's like they're in the front dunking in the back they got like their portrait yeah there's some there's some nice stuff in here good job everybody. great job yeah good well job done. everybody thank you for thank great. you again for like i mean i know that you were so easy to work with and i appreciate you donating the raw but thank you for doing that it's not an easy thing to do especially with the caliber of people you work with so we appreciate it so much um my pleasure thanks. anytime thanks so much for having me on it's been it's been really great and uh any anytime i get to and help out in the music photographer community and allow people to learn. Like I remember when I was starting off, somebody did something similar, uploaded a raw, mm -hmm. and um, I found it super helpful. And uh, I think trying to edit somebody else's images is a great way to learn. And I think it's a great idea. And I'd say good practice. Prop, prop, props to you yeah. guys for for doing this every week and constantly giving people resources and inspiration to to learn and improve. Thank you, so, man. That's very kind of yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I've it's had like, like so so many like, community. So many people over the last week who like aren't involved in photography and like have no idea about photography are like replied to it going like this is this is so cool. I love yes looking at all the edits and they like they've no idea about photography and usually wouldn't care, but just found it really interesting to see how different people approached it. So um Well if yeah. if you still got like another ten minutes, we'd love to give you some questions quick from the community of the people in chat. I'll um, stay for as long as you need me. <laughs> isn't it like one AM? Chill out, man. <laughs> it's 20 past 10 oh, okay, not too I've, bad. I've, I've, I have nothing else to be doing don't worry okay uh, well Connor one of our mods always has a question because I'm sure he wrote it two hours ago he's ready but he wants to know what tour shoot shaped you the most in your in your style or as a person good question um, I, I think like my first tour my first like major world tour was with Niall Horan mm -hmm. um, and I think just naturally because it was my first it was my first time in a tour bus and um, first time working in like a big crew first time shooting a show like that many times and um, like i think i shot it maybe 70 times and um, first time traveling around the world around the world to a lot of places i've never been to and i feel like that really shaped me massively and um, yeah that's the answer yeah that's the that's the biggest jump right going from not touring to touring is a pretty big jump especially Completely. on a world tour it's very disorientating as well. And like, it's such a unique lifestyle. And I think something that's worth mentioning is like, if you're thinking of getting into touring, something that I really struggled with, like I struggle quite bad with anxiety and mm -hmm. uh, mental health stuff. And I found it really hard coming, coming off tours. Like at the very end of a tour, people talk about like post tour blues in a jokey way sometimes. Like the first time I came home from a tour, like, Tour life is so not like normal life. Like you oh, wake yeah. up every day and you're you're living on a bus. You only see the same people every day. You're 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 under like constant like stimulation. Like you're in a new place every day with new food. If you're touring like in Europe, it's a high. You're in a, it's it's a new it's new culture every day. New language, new people. It is a high. Shooting a show is like a really like adrenaline feeling thing, and you get used to having that like every single night. And like on Niall's tour, like his band are all the same age as me and. Mm -hmm. we all get on so well and have the best time and then you're, you're just traveling so much and it's go 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 on flights all the time and then you get to the end of the tour and like it just stops like cold turkey out of nowhere and all like, of a sudden you're like you're sitting like for me i was like sitting back in my parents house in luke and then like i found it really hard like it's it's like a like dopamine and adrenaline are like are like they're like drugs like Dude, you, it's real. you need them and you get used to them and i like i had really really deep like depression for a couple of weeks like after the tour withdrawals completely and yeah. um it's hard man like I and it, 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 it hasn't it still it still hasn't it still hasn't gone yeah and i think that's why so many people like end up just touring forever because they just don't know how to stop it and um like I think as well, like I imagine what it must be like for an artist. Like if, if, if we're getting that much of an adrenaline rush shooting a show every night, imagine what it must be like, like actually playing a show. And can't even, it like, must be that. Playing for 50,000 people every night and then just stopping out of nowhere and sitting at home by yourself. It's like, and like, so I think mental health is something that massively needs to be implemented more into tours going forward. And I know like a few of my friends from Nashville are starting to like bring like, tour counselors and therapists on the road for like somebody to talk to and that's um, great 
it's also such like especially unless you're on a big tour it's very hard like where you're staying in hotels and you have your own room like most people have to share rooms on tours starting off and yeah you mightn't even have a hotel and it's very hard to like get your own space and like to kind of keep a regular kind of routine of like mindfulness and you wake up early or how do you do it do i wake up early no how do you get your own space um luckily like every couple of shows like with a day off and uh, we're usually put in a hotel Mm -hmm. and like i'll have a hotel room and the hotel room for however long i'm in it is kind of the only time you get to be by yourself on a tour um so savor that i've like i use um mindfulness apps and meditations like the calm app and there's one called insight timer that actually lucy foster told me about so like before bed like in my bunk i'll like stick on like a 15 minute like body scan or yeah. meditation and just try and do that just because it's it, it just i feel like it's such a, an out of like almost an out of body experience like shooting a show when you're so focused and you're so focused on things that are outside of you and just to like before you go to bed just like bring yourself back to like ground yourself i suppose um and that's something that i help my mental health in a big way that's great i'm happy to hear that i'm so happy to hear that meditation is becoming more normal because i don't know about you mm. when i was younger it sounded so like so like it, what do you mean like you can't do that and then as now it seems so like yeah i don't know it's like, i think it's so, it's like hummus when i was a kid yeah, nobody I, about hummus. Everybody knows exactly about hummus. i love hummus yeah. i think it's something that um you're both killing me i can't do hummus <laughs> guacamole it's something that like really unfortunately well, yeah. i i didn't get into um i didn't get into like meditation and mindfulness until like i really really like i went through a crisis in my life and really 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 needed it yeah and like i, I really wish that i'd like gotten into it earlier and i think mental health like well, at least you started uh, that's all that matters yeah completely yeah but um, um we, we've got a question I'm, I'm gonna mispronounce it i think it's uh seville or civiliography uh asked any favorite shows, tours, or artists that you've worked with? And, and before you answer that, before you leave today, mm-hmm. I just redeemed, if you're willing to do this, uh, would you critique somebody's shot? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, 100%. so uh, I just redeemed a one image critique. So whoever puts the link in first will go with that where, one. But where, first of all, that, that question, your favorite show, tour, or artist that you've worked with? And get Miranda's question after this too. Also, I know we both just jumped in there. If you wanted to finish up that thought you were saying, go for it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm oh, all good. Okay, cool. um, Apologies. Um, favorite, yeah. I, I don't, I've been very, very, very lucky that I've gotten to work with artists who I get on with super well and whose music I really like too. Um, um, and I haven't, I haven't really, like, people always ask me, like, I'm sure you get it too, and, like, they just want to know well, who was really difficult, what celebrity, which celebrities were difficult. I've very, like, I don't think I've ever worked with anybody who was super difficult, which is And you forget those great. things too, because you have yeah. to focus on the positive stuff. It's- yeah, completely. Um, but I worked with, I toured with Hosier last year, and, like, his first album was, like, a, a really big album for me personally that I listened to an awful lot, and, um same with like Marin Morrison just anytime I get to work with an artist who like I genuinely listen to on a daily basis is like really really special um that's great see so yeah, I don't I don't really have like a personal favorite but those two are really great for me because yeah I was super into the music so let's do Miranda's question because this is a great question looking back uh do you have one person or story or a moment who really made a huge impact on who and where you are today and yes, the answer can be Miranda. I think um, Miranda affects me massively in all aspects of my life. Um, I think, yeah, like when I was 15, when I was talking about that channel, SBTV, um, the guy Jamal Edwards who ran that, I, he put up one time uh, on Twitter, like he just tweeted his email address and was like, I really want to meet interesting people who are doing cool things or whatever. And I was like, this guy was my hero. and. I'd never really met anybody who I looked up to on that scale before. And that was mm-hmm. when I was, I was 15. And I, so I, I sent them an email. I, I think I spent like two hours, like, like crafting this email that was like maybe six sentences long, like pining over every word being like, this needs to be perfect. And I sent it off, not expecting to get a response. And he came back to me like within an hour and was like, Hey, come over to London and like help me out for a day. And that's awesome. Shoot. 
shoot a couple of videos with me yeah. and I like I, I cried I was like I I, I didn't think he was even going to reply and I was, I was 15 and I, I just started and I was like I went over and he was so great and I was like if the person that I look up to the most like has shown some kind of belief in me I was like why couldn't I do this and that was like a massive massive like confidence boost for me and I, I, and like I, I struggle like really really badly with social anxiety and stuff when I was younger and like quite low self-esteem and so conf- low confidence but because he believed in me from that day like I just I never really questioned my abilities as a videographer or a photographer because I was like well if he thinks I'm good enough then I should be good enough and yeah. I think I, know, um, I think you're yeah. you talking about that experience right there is what you're doing right now in my opinion you're doing that for a lot of people out there so right. Just know that, like that way, I, maybe not on the magnitude. Obviously, not bringing these people to your mm-hmm. house, but in some way, you are helping these people on their journey. Whether it be learning how to edit, seeing you talk, a lot of these people look up to you. Like it's very important. So thanks for giving back um, to the community because it's it's so important, and we appreciate it so much. Uh, Lisa has a question: How do you handle comparing your work to other photographers, and and says that that is a challenge for me. And I think it's a challenge for a lot of people. I think Adam was the first one I heard say the thing, and that is, you know, one of the problems is we compare other people's highlight reels with our behind the scenes. How do you handle- I don't say that. I heard you say that one. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if it was originally your quote, but it's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, How do you handle comparing yourself to, to what you see out there today? yeah that's definitely something i struggle with a lot as well like i look at people's work all the time and think oh my god like i i wish my shots looked like that or my colors look like that or i got to shoot that artist and i think you just kind of have to kind of reframe it in your mind and think use it like turn it into inspiration and think um um like if if you see a photo that you want your work to look like don't think oh i wish i'd done that think well like look look at the image and think what what can i do what can i learn from this and to move forward something i do every kind of month on my instagram is i I save photos that i love every day on instagram and then at the end of the month i'll share maybe 30 to 50 of the photos that most inspired me that month and when i go through that it's I'm, i'm looking at what aspects of the images i love and think how can i like put that intention into my shooting going forward and I think you just have to like yeah just look at it as a positive look at it as inspiration and um like when I was younger when I didn't get a job like if, if another photographer got a job ahead of me or got to shoot an artist I really wanted to shoot and um, instead of think like being negative about it or being jealous or I try to think well if they got the job ahead of me then that means that I need to be better and I try and use that as inspiration to try and be yeah. better. Um, I, and I think, I think in all aspects of life, that's the best way to kind of um, flip comparing yourself uh, with other people on its head and try and use it as a motivation rather than well, something to be upset about. I agree with that. And see, what I do try to say is like, it's, a, it's important to compare yourself. I think that's a, a crucial mm. part. Like to say you don't compare yourself would be, everybody does it. It's just right. what you do with that. Everybody inf- does it. It's what you do yeah. with that information that's key. If you're, if you're putting but, yourself down, and like Christian's saying, you know, if you're using it for inspiration or proof that what you want to do is possible or what these are people doing, that's the key. Not being yeah. like, hey, they did this. I can't do it. This is, you know, so I well, like I like it, how you said that, Christian. That was great. It's self-critique as opposed to self-beating up, right? You, yeah, you have to do. approach it based on a number of variables. Where are you in at your level compared to the person? What is it you're trying to accomplish? Which, you know, a lot, yeah. lot of parts to it. I think um, as well, just another point on that, if I, if I may, yeah. is um, like, it, it's, a, I, it's easy to compare. I think a lot of people use age as like a comparison thing. Yeah. And like, obviously I started very young and some people started much later than I did. And um, it's very easy to compare, like every, everybody is like on, is on their own journey and everybody has their own set of cards that they were dealt in life. And you're you, like just because somebody else is further ahead of you earlier on and um, like there are a million factors to why that may be and it's not necessarily always your fault and it's not down to how good your work is and yeah. just like remind yourself that like you're on your own journey and if you're not where you want to be yet or if you see somebody younger than you who's further ahead or somewhere where you want to be just take your time you know um 
like it's it's not your fault some people are born more privileged or some people are born into families where they they know lots of people and straight away or some people are born into families where they can afford to have all of the equipment they want at an early age and and some people can like I was very lucky that like when I was younger and when Jamal invited me over to London to shoot with him like my dad like um like was able to he paid for me like at 15 to go over and like not not that they they couldn't afford it but like they they didn't have like massive amount of spare income but he was able to um take that hit for me and um not everybody is is that lucky and uh if if you're in a situation where you don't have help like that and um, don't it's like that's not it's not your fault you know and um, you're on everyone's on your own journey and if it takes you a little bit longer to get to where you want to be that's that's yep. totally cool uh one thing as adam knows well that i i i firmly believe is good image critique will make you a better photographer as fast as almost anything out there so I've got so don't suck uh, at critiquing here, Christian. Or yeah, so don't say. What I do a lot of it on my podcast. I do a whole segment thing on. I, I I do a particular show where we do image critiques once a month. But Doctor Clown put this in here, and this is their shot. I just want to say I know we're moving forward fast, but I respect how much you just talked about mental health. It's like a super hard thing to talk about because yeah. I uh you know in a way I like like to have professionals on to talk about specific things but i think you did a good way of talking about it from personal experience and mm. how it affects you and you know that's like we're pretty vulnerable so thanks for doing that it's really nice of course of you. absolutely I appreciate it no worries not to all mention right. how important it is yes agree i like that all right and by the way if you know now that you brought that up if if there is anybody in the chat or watches this later that feels they need help or know somebody that do resources are out there reach out to somebody yeah absolutely talk do, your, do what you gotta do. All right, you could do a critique now, Steve. Let's let's get it going in the no, streets. No, not me. This is for Christian. Well, I misspoke, but that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Billy D snaps. Um, Cattle decapitation. This is Doctor Clown band. in the chat. Cattle decapitation. I, they sing about being vegan. Continue. I'm trying to work out what's going on here. I assume this is the artist like leaning down into the pit, screaming directly into the camera. Looks that like what it you looks like guess? to me. Microphone at bottom. Yeah. Because the microphone's pointing right at the lens. Yeah, to me, like this is uh I f yeah, I feel like if the framing, I would like these kind of images are super hard to frame because it's a it's a it's a moment that's happening so quickly and usually you're not expecting it when an artist does this. And um I love that there's so much light in his left eye and he's looking directly into the camera and like you can feel like He's looking directly into your soul um <laughs> but uh it's it feels like i feel like maybe this was shot in quite a small venue um i feel like when you shoot in small venues when the lights are super close to the artist you get these kind of really bright spots and then really dark spots um because the light hasn't traveled too far so it hasn't been able to diffuse and like obviously his his face is quite bright on one side and then quite dark into the side um but it's it's really nice the way you can see like the hair parted like just perfectly like to sh show his eye like the rest of his face is completely covered in hair except for that bit for his eye which is really really nice um so yeah i think i probably because he his face is so low in the image i probably would have cropped it in even tighter maybe because you're, you're not really getting much context um because it's it's not quite it's not very wide so maybe i just try and have like throw away even trying to have any context and maybe crop it in even tighter because maybe this hand at the top and the hand on the right are slightly distracting I, I, like they add a bit of energy to the image but i don't feel like they're really adding to the story and maybe i maybe i'd crop it in a little bit further maybe and make it more like a, a portrait but that's just my first thoughts so i'm gonna add in here everything he just said i agree with but the main thing is what he said about the eye and the hair part, this is a tough capture with him looking right down at you, but mm. you've got the iris Super area, tough. but I can see white of the eye on both sides of the iris, which kind of gives me a, a, a more of a realistic feeling he's looking at me. And I can even see camera left his right eye. Uh, so good job there. The hair is more in focus mm. than the eye, but yeah, whatever. Um, the hands though are super distracting. You don't need the hand at the top at all. Crop it all the way down, take a little bit of the top of his head off 
crop in from the right or burn that hand down or clone it out on the right yeah. and crop in from the left. So put kind of his eyes, like his nose, bridge of his nose, the upper left rule a third. If you did that, so you brought the top down and the left in, it would really make it a much stronger image. But uh, uh, great concept. I agree. It does look like it's kind of in a, in a small venue. And one other person put it in, and this is Bryn, and she's always here. So let me pull this one up. This is Bryn's shot. It's a very cool image. I love the straight away, like I love the symmetry here. I'm a, a big fan of symmetry in, the, in photography. The two drums, she's framed perfectly between the two of them. The colors are super nice. I'd probably personally add a bit more contrast, but that's just personal taste completely. Um, yeah, I, 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 love, I love this image. If I took this, I'd be really happy with it. The only thing that maybe if I was being super picky is like her feet are cut off at the ankles. Um, which can sometimes be a little bit uneasy for the eye, but like that's being super picky if you wanted me to pick things out. Otherwise, I, I really like this image. It has a lot of character. I don't know this artist, um, but I feel like I, 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 I can feel the moment I, like uh, pretty strongly here. Yeah, I really like it. Yeah, I agree. I, it does need more contrast. There's well, no solid team. black really in here. There's no super solid whites. The symmetry is perfect and the moment is perfect. We're going to have to pay him. Yeah. We made him critique photos. So I'll, I'll, I'll critique as many photos as you want me to critique. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, as far as the ankles are concerned, the rule of thumb generally is don't crop at a joint because yeah. it, it looks almost like an amputation as opposed to a crop. So bring it up mid-calf and you'd probably be fine with this. I'd bring out some highlights more in her face, but the spot on her cheek I would actually take out. Really? Um, but other other than that, is that makeup or a spot? I, I think, think that might be. I, I think that's glitter on her face. I thought it was glitter under oh, her. Maybe eyes. it is. Maybe it is. Yeah. At which point, maybe if she was brighter and not so in the shadows, I I wouldn't mind. I think it it's. As much. I think it's fashion. Could be so fashion. It could be something. Painted it's makeup. On Brent says it's makeup. Okay. I really good, like good. it. I, yeah. Good. I I I will keep it. Yeah. But good capture. Good. Add enough. add another one. <laughs> yeah, clone it across. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I think I will try not to finish. I usually say we're done and then we go, but I just want to let everybody know we now have a sensor cleaning as an award on the channel. So if you need to clean your sensor, you can redeem it. It makes no sense. Um, Christian, if you've never used Twitch before, you can basically give these rewards to people who watch your channel. One of them is Image Critique, which is what Steve used to initiate oh. what we just did. It's like but people people generate a currency over time. And ours, gotcha. is, ours is sensor dust. Sensor dust. <laughs> Everybody wants so, Sensor dust is not something you want to be accumulating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it happens. I've never it, once got a sensor cleaned. Wow. Well, that's the sweetest brag I've ever heard. <laughs> no, I just, I just, there's like one spec. You just buy a new camera, right? There's one spec. Oh, I wish. <laughs> and uh, I just, I just, if it gets annoying, I clone it out. Well, everybody say I, thank I, you to I, Christian. I, thank you for joining us, Christian. Thank you for having me. My yeah. pleasure. Absolutely. Anytime. All right. Well. So people can follow you. It's it's on your name. A Adam edited your name to show your Instagram tag. But also but tell Azania. people it's a different one on Twitter too. Where can people find you on Instagram and Twitter? I don't actually use Twitter. Um, okay. But um, I just I have it, but I don't use it anymore. So yeah, just just Instagram um, at Christian Tierney. So yeah, that's me. Well, awesome. Get me over there. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're, we usually, Christian, so also something you can do on Twitch, I know we're about to leave, but I just want to tell you, is, it's kind of cool. So Twitch mm. is like, they have this camaraderie on here where once you're done, you can raid somebody else's channel with your following. Unfortunately for us, nobody else does photography stuff, so we just raid Magic the Gathering players usually. Do you know Magic? What does, what does raid mean? It means like everybody who's watching this channel is going to okay. go watch that channel. So like okay. instead of like canceling and it's gone, it's like a way to like go somewhere. But there's nobody even on right now because this is such a unique time. So we'll just we'll just end today. I was gonna I was trying to find a channel. Well we can go to Yellow Hat. That's a that's a famous player from another. So I just type in raid, then I type in their name, and then everybody goes. Also, thank you everybody. Have a good one. This will be up on YouTube. If Thanks you want everybody to watch for watching. It. Uh you don't have to leave Christian. We're gonna hang for a sec, but I'm gonna do cool. this. Um and I'm going to end the stream in one moment here. Thanks, Marissa.